boom youtube what is going on welcome to the video so yeah the topic of today's like video slash vlog is going to be like the mistakes that i have made in the gym over the years and like when i first thought of this video i was like oh i don't know if i get a full video out of it i don't know if i like made that many mistakes but then I really started to think about it and oh my god, I have made so many mistakes in the gym over the years. Like especially as a beginner, I used to do such dumb shit. So yeah, that's like what I'm going to be chatting to you about throughout the video. So sit back, relax, enjoy it, give it a thumbs up as well and let's go. It's so nice though. It's beautiful day. Alright, let's get on with these mistakes. So the first one that I want to talk about is... One second. Alright, so the first mistake that I want to talk about is training legs. So I think I started in the gym when I was like 16 years old. And yeah, I didn't train legs for at least a year or a year and a half, you know, after that. So yeah, like I remember at the beginning, like I'd made loads of chest and shoulders and like back and arm gains, but my legs uh, were still little twigs. And I remember like making excuses about it. Like at the time I played football three or four days a week and I used to say, you know, like I don't want um, like to be training legs because it's going to affect my performance on the pitch. Like I'm going to have sore legs on the pitch. And in fairness, like I had a bit of a point. Uh, but I definitely could have worked around it if I structured it right and if you know I really wanted to and that imbalance that I created between my upper and lower body in the first couple of years you know took me another couple of years to fix and I really had to focus on legs I remember at one period I was squatting like three or four days per week and I actually saw a lot of like leg growth at that time but like I wouldn't have had to be so extreme with my leg training if you know, I just trained legs normally from the start, you know? So yeah, if anyone isn't training legs at the moment, then get on it. It is not worth it. It is not that painful either. It's actually quite enjoyable uh, when you get used to it. It's gone for a walk with our monsters before the gym. Little lamps on little horse. Come here. God, he yeah, he's not having any of it. Come on. Yeah. You. Hello. Yeah. Give him a rub. Oh. oh. Not a rub. He's such a beast, isn't he? Yeah. He definitely trained legs. <laughs> Alright, so mistake number two is not getting in enough protein. So, like a high protein diet is obviously like pretty essential for like optimal muscle growth to occur. And for years and years, especially when I was in school, like I just wasn't getting in enough protein. So for example, for breakfast, I would have cereal, like which isn't high in protein. For lunch, I'd have like a sandwich with a few slices of ham. For dinner, it would be like whatever my mom gave me, and that would kind of be it. So I definitely was not reaching anywhere near my protein requirement. But then I remember like after a couple of years like making a conscious effort to get in more protein. So for example for breakfast I'd have like beans and ham on toast instead of a cereal which is obviously a lot better for protein. For dinner I'd ask my mom for extra meat. I started drinking protein shakes as well and that definitely helped like speed up my progress in terms of muscle growth in the gym. So just remember that protein is like key uh, for growing muscle. So get your chicken in, your mince in, get your fish in, your protein shakes, etc. Alright, so we just finished our walk there. So we literally walked the race course. So started kind of here and went all the way around. And we reckon it's like four kilometers in total. So it's like a pretty decent walk. Let me see my steps actually. So I've done, don't know if you can see that, 7,033 steps. Cool. But yeah, I want to move on to my next mistake, which was like 
For years and years, I would avoid cables and machines in the gym as much as possible and just stick to like dumbbells and barbells instead. And to be honest, like, I don't even know why that was the case. Like, if, I even thought about it for a split second, like, like why am I avoiding these things? I would literally not have had an answer. But I don't know, I just kind of associated the barbell and the dumbbell with being hardcore and like hence better for muscle growth. But yeah, like that simply like just isn't the case. And like machines and cables have a place in everyone's program, whether you're like a bodybuilder or a powerlifter or whatever. So for example, like the dumbbell lateral arrays, like it's gonna offer a different resistance to the cable lateral arrays. So it's good to like swap between both and it's the same with like maybe a dumbbell dumbbell or a barbell row and a seated cable row. So yeah, like don't be like me and if you want to include like a machine or a cable exercise in your plan, like just go ahead. All right, so I'm just in outside the gym about to hit up a leg session. It's gonna be so tough in this heat. Uh, but yeah, I wanna talk about my next mistake and that basically was being way too harsh and like strict on myself when it came to my diet. So at the beginning, like I really did think that like things like chocolate and sweets and like pizza and crisps and whatever just had no place in my diet. And if I wanted to succeed in growing muscle, then I had to cut them out for good. And I kind of got to a stage where like I built like a pretty unhealthy relationship with food because I build cravings and cravings. And you know, I might go maybe a week or two without any junk food at all. But you know, as soon as a crisp or a slice of pizza like touch my mouth that would be it and I would end up binging uh, usually for like a couple of days so typically it would be like on a Friday night and I wouldn't stop eating until like Sunday morning so yeah this obviously isn't good like physically and psychologically as well like I'd end up feeling so down after a binge and it would just be like a continuous cycle but then I eventually came across kind of like flexible dieting and if it fits your macros and I learned you know that basically fitting these foods into your diet in small amounts is perfectly fine and it will not upset your progress at all and that was such like a weight lifted off my shoulders like being able to you know grab um, you know some sweets or some crisps or order a pizza and not feel any guilt afterwards is literally you know it's like a really great feeling so yeah if you currently like have the mindset that I had and then I highly recommend like doing a little bit of research on flexible dieting and if it fits your macros uh, because it literally like it was so helpful for me. It basically saved me and I don't think I'd have the physique uh, that I currently have, you know, if I didn't like come across it. All right, so dinner is served. So we have some tuna, uh, sweet corn, light mayonnaise. We have a few slices of ham. And yeah, I'm gonna put them on these tortillas um, instead of bread, literally because bread has like, what, 90 calories in a slice, and one of these only has 38, you know, cut life. All right, so let's talk about my next mistake. And that was basically like only training um, a muscle group like once per week. So for example, when I was back in school and doing exams and playing football and whatever, I probably would have only been getting to the gym uh, maybe like three days per week. So, you know, just say I went on a Monday, a Wednesday and a Friday, I probably designated like Monday to chest, Wednesday to back, and I don't know Friday to legs maybe and setting up your workout split like this when your goal is to grow muscle just isn't optimal and you just need to be hitting you know each muscle group at least uh, twice per week so like back in school I probably would have been way better off doing like maybe full body workouts every time I went to the gym because at least then and uh, my chest my back my legs etc would have been getting a workout in three times per week so yeah just remember you know if you can only dedicate like three days per week to the gym 
uh, then set up your split in a way that each major muscle group, especially the ones that you want to really focus on, um, are being hit maybe twice or three times per week. So things like upper lower splits and full body workouts are really, really useful. And you know, I definitely would have benefited way more from them uh, than I did from these big massive chest days and back days and Whatever. Okay, so it is the following day and it is time to move on to my next mistake and that uh, is like not taking creatine for years and years because I kind of thought like I don't even know what I thought. I kind of thought it was a steroid. Like I remember hearing that one of the lads in school uh, was taking it and I was like, oh my God, like what is he doing? I can't believe he's taking creatine. Uh, he's like putting himself at such a risk. But the truth is you know, that just isn't the case. And creatine is literally one of the most tested um, and proven supplements on the market. So yeah, now I take five grams of creatine monohydrate every single day. And that's just because it has been shown uh, to like help your body rapidly produce energy, which can lead to like strength and power increases in the gym. So let's do it. So a heaped little scoop is usually five grams or there or thereabouts. Mm. <sighs> Boom. Just taking the two main men for a walk before we go to the gym. Yeah! Ooh, ooh, ooh. You going for a walk? Yeah. Okay, so we are back from walking the dogs and we are sitting outside the gym about to hit up a push session And I want to move on to um, my next mistake, which was basically like completely neglecting isolation movements So a few years ago when I competed as a power lifter um, I was really focusing on like my main lifts as you would so my squat my bench and my deadlift and because of that I like completely neglected a lot of movements So like I didn't do any tricep work and um, except for the bench press I didn't do any bicep work at all and like due to that like my arms kind of fell behind in comparison to the rest of my physique and ever since I gave like powerlifting a break it's something that I have been really focusing on so for the last year and a half or so and yeah I'm still not happy with them so I just wish that even though I was focusing on strength even though I was focusing on my main powerlifting lifts and uh, that I threw in like a few arm exercises each week and looking back it probably would have enhanced my lift so for example if I was doing like extra tricep work I would I could have had a bigger bench press as a result so yeah just remember that if you really want to improve like a certain muscle group that isolation movements are extremely helpful so like leg extensions for the quads leg curls for the hamstrings bicep curls for the biceps uh, tricep extensions for the triceps etc gym and it is time to talk about my final mistake and that basically was being afraid to bulk so I remember when I first started out in the gym I was kind of like in two separate mindsets so like in one mindset I was like I want to get big I want to get strong I want to grow muscle and I knew you know that in order to do that I needed to spend 
a period of time in a calorie surplus so I knew that I needed to bulk but in another mindset I was like I want to stay lean I want to stay shredded I don't want to lose my six pack so yeah I think that like initially that second mindset kind of took over a little bit and I probably spent the first couple of years that I went to the gym in a slight calorie deficit so I was basically dieting uh, for the first couple of years and I was making gains in the gym regardless but I know that they could have been like way quicker if I just kind of took the plunge um, and started a book. So yeah, if you are just starting off in the gym and you are relatively lean and by that I mean like maybe you have you know a bit of stomach definition or something like that then you are in the perfect position to bulk and don't do what I did don't put it off because you're afraid that you're gonna gain loads and loads of fat just do a little bit of research and make the most out of the first couple of years in the gym because that is when um, you can make the most of your gains. Alright, so I'm going to wrap the video up there. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you can learn uh, from all the mistakes that I've made with regards to my training and my nutrition over the years. Make sure you give the video a big thumbs up as well. Subscribe if you haven't already because there is so much good content coming your way. There's travel vlogs, challenge videos and just loads more. So yeah, thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next one.